this is the kind of question we're talking about. Okay, this is the kind of question we mean. And you'll see, I will, I will actually already show you one of the implications of this to go over here, and we'll deal with it in more depth when we try those questions and we do lots of practice on them. Okay? So just like you have a polynomial here and a polynomial here, right? You can divide them in just the same way that you divide numbers. Okay, so let me remind you how long division with numbers works. Okay, off on the side somewhere separate. Okay, um, let's do a number which isn't too big. Let's go say seven and five hundred. That's doable. Okay. Now, how do we divide numbers using long division when you don't have a calculator, or when you get into a scenario where a calculator is not going to be very helpful? Okay. I've set it up, I've divided 500 by 7. What's my first question? What do I do to that thing? Well, yes. Yeah. How many does times 7 go into 5? Does okay. Work? So how many times does 7 pause, go into pause, 5? Pause, 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 pause. You're giving me like three steps? Okay. Let's go on the first one. I want to know how many times this goes into this, but I'm breaking it up into chunks. That's a crucial step. The reason why I'm doing this is so you see the parallels over here. Okay. The whole point of me going through this algorithm is because I don't know off the top of my head how many 7s there are in 500. So I approach a simpler question, which is how many sevens are there in five, okay? Now there I'm done, right? You can't fit any in there. So that's why you write zero there. I can't fit any there. So then what do I do? What do I do next? Being that I can't fit any five. I appeal to the next digit, right? And how many sevens can I fit into 50? Seven, okay? What do I do with that? Okay, so now I want to know I want to know, therefore, after I've taken those seven sevens out, what am I left with? Okay? So you get the seven sevens, which is 49. Very good. I wanted to learn, after I take my seven sevens out, what will be left out of the 50? And the answer is, one will be left. There's a remainder. Okay? And I can't fit any sevens into that. But I have more digits to access. Just like I used that zero and it hung on to the five, I've got another zero right here, which you can hang on to this one. Okay, I'm trying to make sure you get the fact that this is not just a process that you, you pull down the zero. Why do you pull down the zero? Because I got told to pull down the zero, right? No, 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 the reason why is because you have a remainder. It's not really a remainder. I can fit more numbers into there. Okay, how many sevens go to 10? One. So now I've actually finished my division in terms of knowing how many whole lots of seven I can fit into there, okay? Because I have no more numbers to appeal to, right? You see my, my actual number 500 has stopped. But I do want to do this last step so I know what is left over because remainders are important to me, right? Especially if they're zero. So what am I going to do now? Get the remainder of minus the seven. Good. So I put my seven here because I want to know what's left out of that ten. And the answer is three is left, right? So I have my remainder here. Okay. So keep that in the back of your mind, and let's have a go at this guy here. Now it's called long division for a reason. It's long, okay? You're gonna need a bit of space. I'm definitely gonna need more space than this, okay? So, we're gonna begin exactly the same way, and um, in case you can't remember what all of these things are called. This thing that you're dividing up, for those of you in the economics commerce world, right? It's something which gets shared out in two groups of seven, right? So that's called a dividend, right? Which is why you get paid out dividends. That's a thing which gets distributed to people, okay? Seven is the thing that's doing the dividing, right? Like, I'm dividing by seven. That's the action here. So that's why we call it the divisor, okay? Um, when you divide, sorry, when you multiply, you get product. When you divide, you get quotients, which is why we have the quotient rule, right? So that's that there. And of course, you already know what the last piece is. It's the remainder, okay? Now, what am I going to do with the polynomial? I'm going to put everything in exactly the same spot, okay? So I've got my divisor over here. I've got my dividend over here. And I'm now going to carry out the algorithm so that I get my quotient and my remainder, okay? Now remembering that, the most important part here is the x. That negative 1, it matters, but this x could be like a million or a billion, right? And this negative one will pale off in comparison, okay? So when I do the division, that's why I think mainly about this guy, and I don't worry about him until later. So how many x's fit into x cubed? X squared, x squared right? And now the <coughs> process begins, right? I multiply it down and I do my subtraction. So I multiply, 
uh, and I do my subtraction. Now watch out for your negatives, okay? The negatives are the things that catch people out in polynomial long division, which is one of the reasons why I'm going to show you this other method in case you've never seen it before. So I've got x squared, and I'm going to take away negative x squared, which leaves me with positive 2x squared. It's a positive, right? I'm going to bring the minus 2x down, and then I pose the question again. How many x's go into 2x squared? 2x. Yeah. And I'm going to continue down. So I've got 2x squared minus 2x. Okay. Now, what do I got here? Minus 2x minus minus 2x. So that's 0, right? So what do I do with that? Now, I already know. I already know that I can't fit any x's into that. Right? So in fact, I've already ended up at my remainder. Does that make sense? Like, I end up the remainder when I know I can't go any further. And I can't go any further. <coughs> yeah? So there's my remainder. You happy with that? Um, I think it's important, and the reason why is for the reason I'm going to show you in a second. Okay? Uh, what am I going to do out of this? One of the great things we get out of long division is you get a transformation that you can make a statement that relates your divisor, dividend, quotient, and remainder. Okay? Come back up to that our numerical example up here. Right? If 500 divided by 7 is 71 remainder 3. Okay? So I'm going to say 500 divided by 7 is 71 remainder 3. Right? What I can do is I can say, oh, hold on a second, I can write 500 as equal to 7 lots of 71 plus that remainder, right? Which, by the way, is also how you arrive at mixed numerals, okay? If I go back a step, if I write this as on 7, on 7, on 7, right? That's how I know that 500 divided by 7 is 71 and 3 sevenths, right? That's how, that's how we connect those two ideas together, okay? Now, I'm going to make the same statement, but down here of this polynomial, okay? So I'm going to say, if I take x cubed plus x squared minus 2x plus 5, okay? There's my dividend, right? It's the divisor times the quotient plus whatever was left over, right? Just like I had 7 by 71 plus 3, okay? So in this case, what I've got is x minus 1, there's my divisor x squared plus 2x as my quotient, and there's my remainder hanging out in the end. Are you okay with that? 